We're in the Pompidou in Paris, and we're looking at Laszlo Moholy Nagy. This is A20 from 1924. Moholy Nagy was a member of the Hungarian avant-garde, but in 1920 he comes to Dessau, to Germany, to Walter Grobius's Bauhaus and takes over the first year program. Now what's really important is that when Moholy Nagy comes in, he comes in almost as a kind of engineer. He's often portrayed in work coveralls and he helps the Bauhaus transform into a school that emphasizes the industrial to a much greater extent. With the arrival of Moholy Nagy, we have this new interest in the machine and we certainly have a sense here of very simplified forms. It's easy to misunderstand its simplicity unless one spends some time with it. Okay, so at first it simply looks like a, a number of geometric forms that are overlapping and there's nothing much there. But in fact, this is a really careful study about space, transparency, translucency, and opacity. So if you think about it in terms of light, it becomes easier to understand its complexity. And this is, in fact, one of the so-called light paintings. Let's see if we can work our way through it. My eye is led into this canvas by this long plane of glass, or what seems like glass, this purely transparent form that almost looks like an outsized glass slide that you might use under a microscope. And it forms a diagonal line that suggests a recession into space. I want to stay with that metaphor of the microscope's glass slide for a moment because I think that there is a kind of scientific investigation here. So if we have that transparent glass-like shape that forms that diagonal, we have another similar form that doesn't appear transparent that emerges into our space almost like it's abutting against the transparent shape. But not exactly at a right angle. No. Right? It's a bit more open and it goes into a much deeper space. And it's remarkable to me how deep a space Moholy Nash has constructed just with these very, very simple forms. We also have a sense of opacity and transparency and translucency in the forms around the circle that are overlapping here, and also in the two vertical forms. Well, what's interesting about those vertical forms is that instead of using orthogonals to create space, he's using scale to create space. So we have the larger, thicker one, and then evidently much deeper in space, much further away, the one that's more narrow. And also that circle in the distance that helps to create an illusion of space. Right. And then look at the bands, both vertical and horizontal, that cross. You know, those are translucent, but when they cross, in a sense, there's enough visual mass so that they become opaque. But then counter that with what we might take to be opacity, but it's not. It's reflectivity in the way that the transparent plane actually overlays that translucent vertical. And then you have a kind of white negative space but th that seems to be the result of, <laughs> of reflectivity as opposed to opacity. So we have the opaque, which one can't see through, the translucent, which one can see through somewhat, the transparent, which one can see through entirely, and reflectivity, and the different ways that those overlap and affect color and space. What's interesting to me is that Moholy Nash has not represented any of those things. If you think about the way that painters represent reflectivity and mirrors or right. transparency with a wine glass and a still life, all of those things are still here, but in a very different language. Well, it's almost the language of mathematics. This is an abstraction that refers to those things in the purest terms, almost in mathematical terms, as opposed to the representation of those things. Mm -hmm.